today we go into the next Hebrew letter, which is the eighth Hebrew letter or alphabet. It's called He. All right, C-H, but the C is not pronounced. So it's pronounced like He. Okay, so this is the letter. Okay, now Hebrew letters have a different uh, few ways of writing it. So one is the cursive. Just now I saw, showed you the cursive one. Then you have, I think, manual print, block print, or they call it classical Hebrew. So beginning, I will give you a little bit that is like very uh, technical. And later we go into the heart and the transfer, the revelation part. Okay, this one is just, okay, what it means and what it is. And then the revelation, do you catch the revelation of these letters that can transform your life? That is the, what we want. Okay, so the classical, uh, the block print is like this. There's a yoke, actually like a yute right, at the top. It's constructed by uh, two other letters, the va and the uh, zayin, which we already covered. So remember, we are not fully comprehensive, all right? Whatever we covered is only one and a half hours to two hours. We cannot go through, it's not impossible to have details, but we have at least, you know, some revelation and understanding of the letters through the sessions, okay? There is much more. So as we go along from Saturday and Sunday, you will find you are even learning again more about Aleph, more about Bear, all right? Because what we have, basic only. But it is, it ought to already, uh, transform us. So the gematria of this letter, it uh, had is the gematria, oh, sorry, is the numerical value. This letter, uh, so remember, we learned from picture form, Hebrews got different meanings from the gematria, the numerical value, from the shape of the letter, and also from the word itself. So a letter can have the same letter can be a Hebrew word. So it means something. So you see how, how much revelation is, is inside one Hebrew alphabet. So the letter head is the eight letter. So here is a picture form and it looks like a fence, okay, uh, of the Aleph bed, which is all the letters starting from Aleph to having the numeric value of eight, the pictograph of head looks like a wall or a fence, whereas the classical Hebrew script is constructed of the preceding two letters, Bav and Zayin, joined at the top with a thin connecting line. Okay, so you will have uh, it, a bit different pitch, a different uh, way of writing the letter. So one, as you saw, classical, then block print. And here, so in the block print, you have like a fence or a wall, symbolized uh, by the fence. It comes from the word kaya, meaning living, in the borders of the fence. Okay, so now it ends in the classical. It is the head right, made of the valve and the zayin. Okay, next. This, the, what, so more, more about this letter. According to Jewish mystics, head is the letter of life. Ah, we all want life, right? Life is very important. Okay, and then all the things that uh, we go through in this world is about struggles of life. Why am I, why do I live? Why? Okay, so hey, is this letter, a letter of life since Kayim, life means life and Kayim will go into detail further down. Be uh, living both begin with this letter. So this alphabet, very important, the main do dominance of the letter start of a word starts from its first letter. Look at the first letter and then the letters to, that follows. True life comes from kasidut, which is uh, devotion, right? Devotion with God, right? So that's why we also I'm helping you all to uh, learn to do devotion with the Lord, right? Where you yourself receive the life of God through his word. Remember Jesus said what? My words. Whose words? Jesus' words. All right, are spirit and life. God is a spirit. We all become spirit, born again. All right, we are spirit being inside and we have received life. I've come to give you life. Jesus didn't say, I come to give you knowledge. All right, I come to give you life. 
because of sin, man lost life. Man was in spiritual death. And that's why everyone has to die, physical death. So that life, more and more of this life comes from the devotion. Devotion comes from the word devoted, right? It's a closeness. It's an intimacy, all right, between two individuals. Devotion, you and God. And how, what connects us the word? Receiving the word for yourself. Direct from the one who loves you so much. God himself. All right? So then you receive life. Head is also the number of grace. All right? In the Hebrew, the word ken, C-H-E-N, is a means grace. And also the number of wisdom, which is chokma. Okay? Just keep all this in mind first. Since Vav represents people or others, Vav is the letter number. What number? The material six. of six. 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 Okay, Vav is number six. So I go through again and again, all right? Because as we go further, all right, there are altogether 22 alphabets. As we go further, then you won't be able, then you'll be able to catch faster if you go and listen again at the different letters. So when I say Vav, you already remember what is the gematria, what's the number, what's the significance, how, it, how the letter looks like. One, one go cannot get everything in, okay? Even for me to teach you, I say I was not born a Hebrew. <laughs> so I don't know anything about Hebrew, all right? And for me to teach you, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, so I have to listen many, many times myself. It's not just copy and paste to teach you all. I wait until, listen, until I get a certain revelation. I understand it. You know, when I, I studied this letter, uh, uh, what is this letter? Head. When I just, first time on this, because I choose a few to listen to and a few to read. Not all, uh, uh, okay. So when I first, I said, oh yeah, this letter like very boring like that. Huh? <laughs> One go, you know, like last time beginning months ago when I first sent a YouTube link to the service and asked you all to listen. Then the next day I asked, you all got anything? They all said nothing. <laughs> then I realized, hey, I cannot do this way. Huh? What I get, you all didn't get. All right? So I take it and then break it down, teach it so that you all can understand. But yet again, it's not one go. Listen, because if you can roughly at least get a certain revelation and understanding how the letter looked like and what is the gematria, because the num that means the numerical value and the shape of the letter, as we go on, you'll be able to catch up because all these letters are a combination of different other alphabets. Okay? And, and even on Sunday, there are new alphabets to learn. So when I first look at it, I said, wow, so boring, huh? this letter, like nothing much. See, that's why I said treasure need to dig, <laughs> need time. So I took more time, listen again and listen again. And, you know, to the, to the links that I, I like, you know, that has revelation as well as the technical part. And then I found, oh my God, plus Holy Spirit. And looking into the Psalms and all that. It's so exciting. <laughs> I didn't understand in the beginning. So that's why if we just listen to God's word and then we say, oh, sounds good. You don't get anything. That's why many Christians have been going to church in and out for years. Oh, yeah. They don't have revelation to transform right. their hearts. Right? But we go deeper, deeper, you seek and you shall find. So today, it's super exciting. And all the letters are very exciting. So this one is another uh, continuation. Het is a letter of light. Since the bath represents the Yasha light that descends from God, Zayin represents the chosen light. Now mind is some of the things we are not going to explain, otherwise it will take the whole day. That ascends or returns to God. Therefore, some of the Jewish mystics consider Het to be the doorway of light from heaven. So then you say, what's the difference? Remember, you already heard the word door before. In which letter? Dalet. 
Yes, dialect, okay, which is a word for door. So if you just scrape through, when you come and look at head, you'll say, oh, they put that door, same up. You won't like, get any revelation. This is doorway, different. You have the door, okay? Remember dialect. Dialect means the physical realm, okay? It's about the door, what you see, the things in this world. That is the dialect representing the physical. And of course, Jesus became the door. He came down from the spiritual realm. He became man. He became the dialect, the door for us to go through. The, the, this uh, uh, head is a word added inside. It's like a door. Just now you saw like a fence, a door also. But it's a doorway. So there is a, another revelation added on to the dialect. Is the doorway of light from heaven or also from for us to again see the spiritual realm? See, the first thing that you need to understand very, very clear is that in this whole universe, there are two realms the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this earth. The natural realm, the spiritual realm. Get this first. If you don't have this, you will all confuse. Because our minds and everything will always think from the natural realm. We have been thinking that for um, years. Okay? So know that Jesus said what? I come to reveal my father's kingdom. I come to show you the kingdom. So there is two kingdoms. All right? That it is this material kingdom, this earthly physical kingdom, this physical body, five senses, and God's realm. God's kingdom. He come to show us and make it possible for us now to have our eyes open, spiritual eyes open to see this new realm. All right. So some of you also have been, uh, 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 what do you call it? Visions. I've come to see visions and dreams and all that. Right. That is the opening of your spiritual eyes starting to happen. All right. First from the revelation of God's word. And then you also enter into that area, that realm where you can see visions which is what? Not from this realm. <laughs> right? So even in the world, say, oh, yo, you can see ghosts. Ah. <laughs> They're very scared of people can see ghosts, right? Other mediums can and all that. So what are they seeing? They're seeing in the other realm. Okay, but today, that, yes, that is real. There are, there's no ghosts, but there is spirits, evil spirits. Okay, some of you even experienced these evil spirits before. So this is the different realm. And Jesus, God, is in that realm. And we are supposed to be born from this realm. Born again means born from above. So that's why I said, this is a revelation in itself. It is a revelation that needs to run through our whole journey on this earth. That you are from above. You are from above. We are born again from above. Above. Heaven. That's why we will go back there one day. And therefore, we are run by the regulations and the laws of heaven, that realm, the kingdom realm, where you give and you receive, where you declare and you are healed, you act on it. So it's different altogether, right? The law of that realm is that in, on this earth, the law is I give, I got no more. In heaven's realm, we give and we have more. It's different because we come from there. Now we have the immune system of up there. You know, the ambassador, right? They have their immune immunity on whichever country they go to. The police cannot catch them. <laughs> they are ambassadors. And then even the citizens all just need to run into that embassy, right? And that country cannot catch you. So when we understand this real more and more, right? Germs, virus, whatever sickness, disease cannot touch us. But if you have it, don't feel condemned. Just need to understand more and catch the revelation that all this doesn't belong to you. You come from the other realm. But it takes some time to come out of it, right? To have this revelation. Revelation means what? Reveal, open, conceal and reveal. That what is hidden is now being open. Ephesians 3, right? Open the eyes of my understanding, which is your spirit eyes. To see that realm, and it all starts from 
born again from above. Born again from where? From above. The first physical birth is from this earth. That's why we are earthly. We all think in terms of what you can see, touch and feel and taste. But born again from above is what the physical cannot see, touch, feel and taste. It is what is revealed in the word of God. God said, this is it. This, you are healed. God said, you are rich. God said, this is the realm we cannot see with the physical, but God is revealed to us through his word. We begin to understand heaven. We begin to understand the power in this spirit realm, the power of words that we speak. If we speak God's word, miracles happen. Miracles is in God's realm from above. So first, you have to be a citizen of heaven <laughs> to have inheritance, the heavenly inheritance, Ephesians 1. You are blessed with all blessings from above. right? So because you are born from there, then only you have a right to all these blessings and inheritance. If you still think you are born from here, if you're still thinking of ourselves or this earth, you never access your spiritual inheritance. So every day, it's nothing wrong to confess again, I'm born from above. Or you think, I already know lah, that one basic Christianity. <laughs> so basic that we don't even realize it is so supernatural and so powerful. Hmm? It, that is your starting point, that you are born from above. Your spirit man was born again. You were given the new life. Okay, That is the number eight. New life. New beginning. Okay, from above. So it's a cat. It's like a doorway. So we have been going through all the uh, seven alphabets today. The eight alphabet is the doorway after Jesus died on the cross. All right, everything pointing to Jesus. Now he's, he's also the door. He's also the one who gave us the gimel, gave us life, and then the humble man. And gave us the power to overcome. Now, we enter the eight letter head. Since head is formed from Vav and Zayin, one gametria value would be 13. So this is another <clears throat> thing about this uh, letter. Can be 13, the same value as love. It's a value for, I can't, okay, won't go into this one. Putting these ideas together, we can see that love unifies us in true fellowship just as Yeshua taught us. So another uh, point here about Kate is that it's also unite. All right, it's about the love among the brethren. That they may be one, even as we are one in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. Okay, now you, as we go along, you'll see how this uh, word Head and the doorway of life. So the word Kai is short for Kaim or life, and the letter head can be seen to resemble a doorway where the blood of the lamb was dug during the first Passover. So remember, they have to put the blood of the lamb onto the doorpost for us to enter in to the heavenly realm, to the spiritual realm. We need to go through the blood of Jesus. All right, the blood of Jesus, no other way, through the blood of Jesus. That's how we receive and we accept that Jesus' blood is the only blood or only way to wash away our sins for us to enter into the new realm, the kingdom realm, all right, or the heavenly realm. And then there is another commentary that says there are many necklaces that spell the Hebrew word kai, which is life. The word itself resembles a lamb. And from this is what we can say, lamb gives life, that we should apply to the doorway of our heart. So Jesus, as the lamb of God that was slain, has now become the doorway to, the, to God, to the spiritual realm inside our heart. Okay, head is the number of, number eight is the number of new beginnings. See, when you, door, doorway, all right, a way now you walk through. So first the door, the dialect is just the door, the physical door. All right, then, of course, Jesus being that door as well. Doorway now. Pass through Jesus, the blood of the Lamb. Now there is a way for you to walk the rest of your journey on this earth. That's why it's called 
new beginning. All right, you pass from one to the other, one realm to the other realm is also in actually most of the Hebrew letters. So it also represents new beginning. It represents grace because we don't deserve it, right? We're all sinners. We cannot make ourselves clean or holy. But Jesus became that doorway for us to walk through. I am the door, Jesus said in John 10, 9. I'm the door, walk through, walk through me, okay? Through my blood, the sacrifice. It's also grace, right? That we totally didn't merit this doorway, right? But yet he came and saved us. It's a concept of new beginning. The covenant of circumcision occurs on the eighth day of a boy's life, marking the beginning of his new life. This is to help you understand number eight as a beginning of new life. And all the uh, things that are eight in the Bible, all right, shows that it is the beginning of new life or it signifies, all right? So circumcision starts on the eighth day, uh, beginning of his life. And then the eight souls say during the uh, flood of Noah, the Lord read, so the eight souls is the new new beginning, right? They are the only ones who came out into after the, the, the flood. The Lord reaffirmed his covenant to Abraham eight times. David was the eighth son of Jesse. Sukkot is an eight-day festival. Jesus was resurrected on the first day of the week, which is, we understand, the preceding seven days to constitute a complete cycle is the eighth day. So in a week, there are seven days. The next day is the eighth day, the new beginning. We call it, what we say, what? Oh, the new week, right? New beginning, a new week, right? So eight always resemble a new beginning. It is like, it's also known as the one after, beyond, all right? We have seven is the number of completion, perfection, complete already seven, right? Then the eighth is the one beyond. Okay, we will go more into it later. Head is the letter of also discipleship to Jesus. Since we learned that Bar represents man, Zayin represents the crown man who wields the sword of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the king of the Jews, you can see the head is a picture of discipleship to Jesus. So it also represents we connected to Jesus as the crown man and we are the men, all right? The, Six is the number of men. And now we connect to him and we choose to be his disciples. All right. So just now I shared a little bit about disciple being disciplined. <clears throat> okay. We go into Psalms first. Psalms 119. Verse 57. Head. So there will be a little bit of uh, difference in spelling. Don't worry about that. Right. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. Okay, with the little explanation a bit just now, now look at this Psalms and see it, whether you get any revelation about head from these Psalms. Okay, as again, I say again, all right, in the Psalms so far, all that we have learned, Psalms 119 until verse 57, it's always about God's word, right? If we don't have understanding of each letter, we will just say, oh, Psalm 119 is just David saying, I love God's word, or I follow God's word. <laughs> it's not that, okay? Only, it is broke. It's actually split up into the different meanings of the alphabets, but all come into God's word. All wisdom from the letters, all revelation, is from his word. You know why I stress so much his word already? Huh? Without his word, we are just very human on this earth. If we don't put God's word inside our heart. Okay? So here is about the letter He. Yet it is in God's word. Hmm? Lord, you are mine. I promise to obey your words. You are my satisfaction, Lord, and all that I need. I'm determined to do everything you say. That is the verse one of this letter. So remember, the word head is new life, new beginning. So 
Where do you get your new life from? Jesus, yes. But Jesus is the word. The word. Where can you have this new life, which is the spiritual life? How do you know anything about spiritual life? Where is it revealed to us who you came from, who God is? How do we know all these things? Is it from pastor only? <laughs> from the word of God, the, the letter from God, right? The Bible is God's revelation to man about his kingdom. And Jesus, that is in the Old Testament, prophesying that Jesus will come and manifest himself one day. And the Jews already looked to the Messiah. They haven't seen him yet. But the word of God already, the prophecies already, the letter, the, you know, the, the, the Torah that was received, Moses received when he went up to Mount Sinai, was a revealing God writing to him. Right? He was a secretary taking down everything about God, who God is, all the uh, laws, so-called statutes and decrees and instructions about how to live the heavenly life on this earth. Even without Christ yet, but it still applies today. Yeah, Then that Jesus, the Messiah, will come uh, one day, all right, born of a virgin or prophesied, and die for our sins, take that punishment, so that now it's not only just following the law, the instructions of God about how to live the spiritual life, the overcoming life on this earth. They were very healthy, very rich, okay? That's not normal for the Gentiles. And how we can live this on this earth by just following God's instructions. Now, the, in the new covenant after Jesus come, these instructions are written in our hearts that we can follow by making a decision, a choice. Yes, Lord, I love your Lord now. You gave me the ability to follow. You gave me the ability, the power to obey. Different, yet same purpose, but greater. Okay, so now in this head is the new beginning. Okay, that, that now everyone can enter, those who believe in Jesus can now enter into this new life. Right, hey, you are my satisfaction. No more the things of the world is your satisfaction. <laughs> okay, no more the boyfriend or girlfriend is your hundred percent satisfaction. Okay? Nothing against that, right? God is, is fine, but the only satis main hundred percent satisfaction that we were created for that can satisfy us, we were created for Him, for God. That's why. No, nothing else. Right, people in the world think that, okay, if I find enough money, I'll be satisfied. After finding enough money, still not satisfied. <laughs> find enough wives, also not satisfied. <laughs> right? Nothing could ever satisfy human, human being except the creator himself. Okay, and where is it? Where can you find your creator? The, the, the world said, well, you find your second half. Huh? <laughs> that is your physical what is it? Second half. Okay. Um, your other half. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The one who created us in the spirit. Yeah. This is the only satisfaction. And it comes from his word. Comes from also obeying, obeying his word. You enter into the new life. Because he can tell you. All right. God can say, I am your healer. I am your financer. I am your source. So if you don't obey that word, then nothing happens. Okay? Nothing happens. It's just belong to that realm. You haven't taken it down. All right? Your belief, your action brings that light to exist, right? So that is the new life. Where, I be, I, you, where God is my satisfaction, where his word is what I delight in. It's my everything. With all my heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you promised. Next verse. So remember, head is number eight. It's also resemble life, favor, and grace. So specifically in this verse, where do you find favor? In God's promises. In the grace, undeserved favor, 
is when you dig deep and you say, this is what you say. Second Corinthians 9, uh, 8, 9. For you see the grace of our Lord Jesus that even though he was rich in heaven, he became poor. He humbled himself and became poor so that we, through his poverty, might become rich. That's the grace of God. Even the, the verse starts with, for you see the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the favor of God, undeserving. In his word, if you never knew this scripture, you will never have any experience and understanding of grace. It's all this become, is revealed what? From his word. If you hear the preacher one, whether whoever it is, you just hear and then it may just go off. But he is actually quoting from the word, just like I am quoting from God's word. It is from his word. So if we hear one time, can you forever inside you? No. Just like all the school knowledge that we learn, we give back to the teacher, right? <laughs> and you know, maybe you really use your <laughs> information of geography, history, maps in your work today, a little bit maybe, right? But so as we put, that's why meditation and confession come back again. You say, oh, I know grace already. I listened to grace message. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Until you meditate yourself, that word, speak it out yourself. We feed it into your spirit. You don't have the, the ability or, you know, it is there. You're not able to walk in it yet. Put it in. The grace, the favor of God is in his word. When you have his word, you know, okay, today there's a lot of challenges, but Lord, I thank you. You your favor is upon me based on the word of God, based on John, based on 2 Corinthians, based on Genesis. Yeah, that is how specific it is and how powerful God's word it is. God's word is specific. Don't general, because general, you become like if, the Adam and if, if. <laughs> she very general. <laughs> so general until she's not sure what is from God, what is from the devil, what is what. Yeah. Be clear. This is what God said. This is what I follow. And you will be able to walk victoriously. The devil cannot challenge. Right? Because you say, God said, where? Uh, even if you don't know the text now, God help us a lot already. <laughs> that is the use of Google. Just find the text. But you need to know, I mean, as where it is. Uh, but the main thing you must know the main verse, all right? The promises of God. If we can tell God, you promise me this. When you tithe and offer, go meditate and speak out. Malachi 3, Hebrews, speak this. Oh, don't, don't tithe. And then after that, well, I'm so scared. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> when you tithe, pour water, sunlight on it, water of God's word. Begin to speak what God said about tithing. God said about giving. My seed will grow, multiply, like what Rachel said. My seed will multiply, right? What we always say, or, you know, when we don't meditate on God's word, is that, Chama, this week cannot pay bills. <laughs> We're not speaking in line with God's word. Then how I expect the seed to grow? Water it with speak God's word. You dare to tithe? challenge and trust to believe God, you dare to give your, your, your monies and finances and whatever, then dare to continue with it. Speak God's word over your seed. Water your seed. And you will see it, the miracles begin to happen in your life. I pondered the direction of my life and I turned to follow your laws. See, God's word, the new beginning has got new ways, right? It's a doorway. Now you enter there is a direction there. It's different already. Last time is look left, look right, look back. <laughs> Correct? That's how we walk on this earth, right? Left, right. See what this person do, what that person do, and then worse, look backwards. <laughs> My past, you know, how is it? I, I cannot, I cannot. Last time I like that one, I born like that one. I have all these weaknesses, I have all these fears. Direction means now a new direction, you know, the crossroad you have chosen, Jesus. Into this new life, 
that is new direction. So where do you get your new direction instruction from? GPS, right? New one. <laughs> okay, because now you got a new destination. Last time we always run around on this earth only. <laughs> now our destination is the spiritual realm. It's eventually heaven and a new purpose to receive the reward to follow him and serve him. So you, where do you find your new direction for this new life? Hey, God's word. Lah. <laughs> okay. If it's we are following God, then we follow God's word. His word is his direction in our life. What to do, what to the main one, and the un, you have the known will and the unknown will. When you follow the known will, then you're able to also do the unknown one. For example, okay, let's say in area of hiding, you just follow the hiding and the giving. You say, Lord, okay, I'm, I want to give because your word says so. And then you will have the unknown one, which is how much to give. So where? Which ground? Yeah. So this one, you'll hear the Holy Spirit already. Okay. So you need to follow the main one, which is written in the manual. Okay. Then only you can hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the direction manual is God's word. We don't, okay, I'm a new creation. And then I don't know where to go. <laughs> now go to church is it okay. remember you are the church okay so the direction of your life now which job where to do what to stay where to you know all these things what is the instruction to follow in this new life because it's totally new new means you have never walked this way before that's new okay so we're all from this earth you have until you got born again you have no idea of this spiritual realm other than a rough idea that should be a heaven somewhere. There should be a God. But when you receive the Lord, you enter in the doorway, the head into the new life. So in this new life, new direction, because it's a new destination. Everything is new. So the new destination that you don't know, you use GPS or not. Those of you who drive. <laughs> if you are very used to the place already, you don't use GPS, correct? You every day go home, you know where to, how to go home already. So you don't use GPS. You don't refer to the manual. But this new life, you're not familiar with at all. You need the instructions. You need the guidance. You need the directions from your new manual, the Bible. All right? And the Bible teach different ways. Okay? So what the teaching, they give you the pastor, the Bible, and all that. There are a lot of things on your new direction in life come from his word so that's where i pondered is the word meditate i ponder i sit down and think yeah today automatic you you, you use gps but sometimes you put, you miss also you have to make uh, recalculate okay so we also can miss if you don't understand the direction so I got give us pastors and teachers and others to help us to understand and then we decide whether we want to follow or not. Okay, so new life needs new instruction, new direction. Then you say, now you understand why you need to go to God's word and not man's word because all the time, man without God only give you one way direction. That one way is to help without God. You think the devil so nice teach you how to get, how to get into heaven? <laughs> so think again, right? It's a new life. Hey, new life after I left bed, Gimel, Galet, Hey, right? All this, what God has done to bring us now into a new, totally new life. There's no way you can go to uh, Alaska. I think that's probably one place that everybody don't know. <laughs> okay. Haven't been, I believe. And then you say, I know, I'm, I know, I know how to go. No, you need to go for your tour guide. You need to follow properly or you get lost. We don't want to be the lost, found, lost. <laughs> we were lost and now I'm found and then I'm lost again. <laughs> don't add to the Amazing Grace song. <laughs> I once was lost, but now I'm found. And then after that, go into church and then become lost again. <laughs> no, all right? Get the manual, God's word, to lead you into 
the directions for your new life. Remember, new life, new life. Head is new life, new, new, new. Something that you are not, you don't know about. Otherwise, it's not called new. It's old life. Old life, you are familiar already. You say, I know how to turn. This way, goes there. New life, we cannot depend on our own self anymore, on, on our own experience anymore. It's a new life. It's a spiritual life, spiritual realm. We need God's instructions. If we are so clever, <laughs> then we don't need God, right? We're still in the old life. God will direct us. Holy Spirit guide us. The word is the manual instruction. That is the head. I turn to follow your laws. So with the instruction there, we follow. Very simple. GPS, you don't follow, you get lost. <laughs> God's word, you don't follow. Then you go around a bit like the children of Israel in the wilderness. Do you want to go round and round after you were found? <laughs> I want, remember, I once was found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And then don't end with, I'm lost again, Lord. <laughs> Very sad, right? Lost, found, lost. No, found already, follow direction. God's direction, okay, into the new life. When I realize I'm going astray, I turn back to obey your instruction. Ah, some people don't want to follow GPS, right? They go round, 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 give up already, then turn on the GPS <laughs> and follow because very stubborn. I think I know how to go. It's a, but actually, it's a new way, new route. Maybe the road also changed already. Okay, so the GPS will help you to get to the place that you want to go to safely. So, but, some, but sometimes we have to learn from mistake, right? So disobedient, they're so in our old self. And then the Lord let us go astray. <laughs> go, you want to go your way, you go. Go, 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 bang here, bang there. And then after that, the grace of God, okay, bring us back. He said, okay, now you, enough of banging your head. <laughs> pain or not? Pain, very pain. Okay, now come back. Okay, okay, God, I come back. <laughs> I follow now your instruction so that I don't get blue black. So many blue black enter heaven. <laughs> okay, so God says He gives us the, the way, right? Jesus is the way. Follow the, the door way to your new life, which none of us are familiar with. Trust me, <laughs> how can we be familiar with the spiritual world if God didn't reveal to us in the Bible and through Jesus coming down? <laughs> we have no idea. We're all born under Adam, born into this world. And live a life all right from this world from the wisdom of this world okay so if you've gone astray make mistake it's okay that's what grace is so beautiful he lead us back and all we need to say is okay lord sorry <laughs> i enough of my own stubbornness okay, i better follow your way okay lord lead me again all right and follow and he will take us back gladly right just like the prodigal son isn't it the father right the prodigal son yeah make a lot of mistakes very stubborn <laughs> he think he can make it in the world he just need a lot of money that's all <laughs> take the father's money go but the father still love him okay now go 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 until his own way he eat the what the pigs eat and then he come back to his senses and say hey in my father's house ah. Huh, Wow, even the servants eat better than this. Uh. <laughs> that is not in already. <laughs> God, you know, allow. It's not that God put you into uh, trouble in your life. Sometimes God just let us go through. I've also gone through. You know, so then we come back. And God is, the Father is waiting for us to follow Him. Follow His instructions. I give my all to follow your revelation life. I will not delay to obey. Yeah, it's not hard to obey when you realize that person you are obeying love you, gave himself for you, will not harm you. Yes, in the world, people may be very forceful on you and they may have made, made use of you, abuse you, all right? But they are not God. Now we have come to a real heavenly father, a God of this universe, who is father to us. So these people who abuse you, use you in the world, they are not 99.9%, .9 they are not your father, right? 
<laughs> okay, yeah, but there may be some mean ones, okay, but very rare. So our God is Abba, is Daddy. All right, when he instructs us, it's not to harm us. That's why Jeremiah 29, 11, when God says, my, all the things, my thoughts towards you are for good and for a future, that you may have a hope and a future. God talks towards us because he is the real father. You have finally found uh, Xiaoling, your real father. The father who will never give up on you. Your father, heavenly father, who will never leave you alone. Even when we make mistakes, when we go astray, when we are disobedient, he's still there waiting for us and giving us the ability to come back to him and loving us, never giving up on us. It's such a wonderful joy to sometimes give up on our own uh, trying and then say, Lord, I rest in you. That's why perfection, number seven, is resting in the finished work. After you rest, then you enter into the new life, number eight. And that's where you start walking, following his ways. I will hurry without delay to obey your commandments. Yeah, When you realize how wonderful God is, this new life that he has given you, this new instruction is for our good. It's for our good because it's a new life altogether. Then we hurry to obey. We hurry to do the things that he tells us to do. We don't delay. We don't say, wait, la, wait, la, wait. La. It's so exciting now to follow God's commandments. That's why his commandments are no more grievous. It's not heavy anymore to, to uh, uh, bring tithes or, or offerings. It's not. It's a joy now. Okay? It's a delight. You run to it. You quickly, quickly go do. That is how the new life begins in us. And the world say, huh? so strange. <laughs> because they don't have, they're still living the old life. They don't understand this new life. <laughs> All right. Even when temptations encircle me with evil, I won't forget for a moment to follow your commands. So evil people try to drag me into sin, but I'm firmly anchored to your instructions. Instructions are God's word that anchor us, stabilize us, right? That's, you know, it's, if you're standing on the instruction, I mean, you know, last time we had this verse, I think my sister, this song, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. So, if you have these promises of God, the instructions that you follow and obey, whether it's in health, healing, or any other area, or tithing, or giving, you do it, you are standing, you are anchored already. It's like the, the, the ship got an anchor. Even how strong the storm comes, it cannot move the ship away. It's anchored. We are anchored in Jesus, in his instructions. I'm anchored to, firmly anchored to your instructions. God is not forgetful or blind to what you do in obeying him. He saw it. You know, remember, God's eyes are sharp. He is God. So he can see when we choose to obey him, say, okay, this child follows my word, my instruction. And therefore, I come down to him from spiritual realm and do exactly what I said I would do. So even whatever temptation around us, he protects us and he is there with us. He will keep us from falling. <clears throat> In the middle of the night, I awake to give thanks to you because of all your revelation light, so right and true. I rise at midnight to thank you for your just regulation. You see, in this new life, it is, if we begin to see God's instructions, or if, if you say commandments, okay, as long as you, under, if you, you know how to differentiate, all right, today, uh, we are not doing because we have to. All right, so I will give you a little bit further down. You can see that more clearly. But David loved his God's regulations. You know, it's regulate. <laughs> you regulate something you do regularly. All right, instructions following regulations. That's called regulations. The things that you can follow. Regulations of the law. Regulations of uh, 
things that you have to do. Normally, we hate it, right? <laughs> you hate to follow oh, a rigid, uh, anything that is uh, like a, a, you know, a rule like that. But when you are born again and you understand God's certain rules that he put there is for our benefit, even midnight or so, we can wake up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you tell me to type. Thank you, Lord, that your word says, you know, to do this or do that, to serve you, to go and save souls. Thank you, Lord, because you don't just see the spiritual realm. The ending is the rewards. <laughs> the rewards are coming. Don't live an earthly life where you are oblivious of the spiritual reward. It will come because, as I said before, right? Every man is appointed to die. No one can escape. And this has been proven through 6,000 years. No one has escaped death, physical death, which means that if God say there is life, that after death, there is. <laughs> so beautiful, right? So how many have you have wake up in the middle of the night and thank you, God, for your regulations that are guiding me in my life. Thank you, God. I got something to obey. <laughs> if not, we have become like notorious people, nothing to obey, nothing to, you know, to in that sense, I have the joy of pleasing our Father. It's a different type, all right, of the legal, lawful one. Beautiful. I am a friend to anyone who fears you, anyone who obeys your commandments, right? That's why the church is the sent out ones, or the set apart ones, sorry, the set apart ones. You have been born from above. That's the church, all right? We are the church, every one of us here. We are set apart, and we have the joy to follow God's commandments. That's why we can friend with each other. <laughs> right? Remember, if we two cannot walk together except they be agreed. If you, can, you are always in disagreement with someone, how to, how to fellowship? Cannot. Because every time I, you are disagreeing, it's very difficult. Right? But here in the church, in the body of Christ, we agree on one thing. God's word is the final authority. God's word is the manual instruction for our new life. Remember, you have a new life, need new instructions, new manual, new directions. All come from God's word. Give me more revelation of your ways for I see your love, tender care everywhere. When we follow God's word, when we are born again, what we see is God's love everywhere. Even in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the problem, we see the spiritual eyes will be open to see, hey, God is loving me. <laughs> God is loving me in this situation, in my family, in my work, in my outside, wherever it is. He is loving me and he is loving people. He, is, he loves this world. You will no longer see wow, all kinds of laws, ten commandments in the Old Testament. When you understand this new life, you open the Bible, it's not lawful. Huh? <laughs> God is not lawful at all. You know, every instruction he put there is so that I can benefit and live in the blessed new creation life. Even for the people in the Old Testament, God was never lawful. Yeah, God has laws, but not lawful. Lawful is very different from laws. All right? The guideline to give us the wonderful life, the blessed life. The children of Israel were living blessed life, all following the instructions of God. Those who didn't follow, yeah, they got the curse. Today, of course, Jesus redeemed us from the curse. But until following his word becomes a joy. Oh Lord, your unfailing love fills the earth. Open your eyes and see God's love. Look at the trees. Look at the, this one. If look at your table. You've got food to eat. <laughs> you got clothes to wear. More than enough, right? For us ladies, right? <laughs> the men will say, hi, yeah, why you need to buy some more? <laughs> no, yeah, nothing to wear. <laughs> and then the cupboard will close. There's no more. There's the goodness of love of God. He is always blessing us with new clothes, new things, somewhere from here, somebody gave up or whatever. Huh? Yeah. See the love. Don't see the devil direct you. See the wrong direction. See, one direct you, God's word, God. Holy Spirit direct us to God's goodness and love we see everywhere. 
and we are thankful. Then there is the other part, your choice. Don't be led by the spirit. The Bible says what? Led by the Holy Spirit. Don't be led by evil spirit. <laughs> Begin to recognize lie from truth and follow the truth. All right. Oh, Lord, your unfailing love fills the earth. Teach me your decrees. Teach me. Let me have more revelation and understanding of whatever you have decreed, whatever you have said. I said so. God said so. All these are decrees, declaring. All right. And when I declare, God is for me, not against me, then we won't see the people around as always against us. Yeah. Because you begin to see God's love for you. Yeah. yeah they may look like they are against me, but God is for me. God will turn it around. It's when you know the word of God. Romans 8, it says that he will turn everything for our good. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says our future already anchored in him is good. So begin to see good from where? From God's word. If you don't have God's word, you see devil's word. He speak to you a lot. Don't speak to him. Don't lie on the devil anymore, right? Go into God's word because new life, new life, the head. It's a new life, represent new life. So some words that start with the letter that finishes the, the eight verses in Psalms 119 about head. Some words that start with the letter head. Okay, I just now briefly went through. First is life, all right? Kain, see the letter head there? Now, you need to look many times, right? Because if you only look one time, you will think this could be Dale, this could be hey and all that. There's only a the slight difference. Okay, so that's why diligently study, all right, to recognize and then why it's so important. Then because it has meaning, meaning that can change your life, right? So kayin, kayim means life starts with the letter he, new life, new beginning. That's where you get the word life. Okay, the whole thing means life. So we won't go into it has two yuts, right? We won't go into all the letters yet. Uh, Kai is number 18. This is because one is made of head, number eight, and the youth is number 10. So 18 signify life. Okay, a fountain of life was in him, and his life is like for all humanity. John 1 4. So whoever does not have Jesus, the Bible say, God say, has no life. You may have the physical life. You live until 70 years old, 80 years old. You can be the richest man on earth. But according to God, because remember the two realms, this life, so-called life, is actually death. It's just a physical one. The eternal life is what we got when we receive Jesus. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal everlasting life. This is the life that we all receive. By his grace, eternally we will live. Physical life will go off. God will give us a new body and we will live eternally forever and ever and ever with him. This is the life. Okay, the Kayim. In him, there is no other life. So his life is the light of, for all humanity. Light shows the way. The word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. That's why head, head is about new directions. His word into this new life grace is the another meaning or another word that starts with head chen so ching lan's name is like this right chen <laughs> c-h-e-n is it uh it means in hebrew grace okay again you see the letter starts with the letter uh head all right also means uh, in the classical, you can, it also means favor, all right? Grace and favor are linked together. Then another word, Hebrew word for grace is chesed, which also starts with the letter uh, head, okay? So we don't have time to go into all the details first. And from the overflow of his fullness, John 1, 16, we have received grace hit upon grace. That is chesed, that is chen, chen. That is the word that from the letter head that we are learning this morning. Moses gave us the law, but Jesus, the anointed one, unveils truth wrapped in tender mercy. So in Christ, we have life, we have grace. That is all in the letter head, the new beginning. All right. 
Moses was the lawgiver, Jesus is the grace giver. In the first miracle of Moses, he turned water into blood, resulting in death. In the first miracle of grace, Jesus turned water into wine, resulting in life and celebration. So we, normally, you, you go to funeral, you don't celebrate, right? <laughs> you know, hee hee ha ha, right? But when you have a new birth, you celebrate because new life has come into this world, right? So later when Rebecca gives birth to a new baby, we all celebrate, right? Ah, <laughs> she can give birth, she married already. <laughs> so this is life. We are all, when uh, 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 who is that? Xiao Ling received the Lord, we celebrate. The Bible said, one heaven rejoice, celebration. We are all very happy because life, life has come into one soul that was dead. Funeral, we cry. Right? I mean, it is like separation. It's death. It's horrible. But of course, today, it's to a believer, it's no more horrible, but still it's a parting. Right? But life come into the world, it's rejoicing, it's celebration. This is what the head represents. Not the head, the head, not C-H-E-T. Okay? It comes from Jesus. And then another beautiful word that starts with the head, the Hebrew, is wisdom. In this world, we need wisdom. I always remember oh, where Janice disappeared already. Right? The first time she asked for prayer, she said, oh, pray for me for more wisdom. Right? And I said, just go read the Bible, meditate, confession, and confess the word of God. And you will have wisdom to live this new life. All right? So wisdom starts with the letter H as well. Deuteronomy 34, it's taken from this uh, verse. Joshua son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. We want the wisdom that is from God. We don't want the wisdom of the world, right? For Moses had laid his hands on him. So there's impartation in laying on of hands as well. So the people of Israel obeyed him, doing just as the Lord commanded Moses. And then in 1 Corinthians 1, 30 to 30, 31 today, in Christ, but of him, okay, if you want to meditate, Meditate one of these are one of very important scriptures. Good until you know it. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who became past tense. All right, Jesus has become. Remember the I am. If you you were on Sunday, I am is uh, God. I am that I am. I exist. That means I have become. If you believe in me, you call me Lord. I become Lord to you. The, the self-existing one or the existing one. So our part for God to become all this to us is to acknowledge him. So if you want the wisdom of God, you say, Lord Jesus, you are my wisdom. We need to acknowledge that. That is when the vow comes in. That is when the I am becomes what you need. You need wisdom, confess his word. The word is when you are confessing his word, you are saying that your word, I put your word above as Lord, as my master. I follow your instructions. You become Lord in my life, right? You are the existing one. You are my healer. I, put, I confess your word. You want wisdom? Confess this. In Christ Jesus, you Christ Lord, you have become my wisdom. Christ means his word. His word. Jesus, God became manifested in the flesh. That's Jesus. Jesus Christ has become, became for us wisdom from where? God. In James, talk about two types of wisdom. Corinthians also talk about that. The worldly wisdom and God's wisdom. All the wisdom, sorry to say, that we have in this world before you got born again is the wisdom from this world, from the devil. The earthly wisdom. After you got born again, you access, you have Jesus, the heavenly wisdom. And in order to get more of this wisdom, open the Bible and open your mouth <laughs> to speak and declare this wisdom in your life in the many areas of God's word. Righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Christ is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Okay? As it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Glory, that means boast. These are the things we boast about. Righteousness, I'm self-righteous. Okay, I can do this, I can do that. Or, you know, I already learned this. I know it all, blah, blah, blah. And today, 
this declaration all right, of wisdom is, God, you are my wisdom. <laughs> I acknowledge I'm foolish. <laughs> or do you want God to let us go through the experience of foolishness? <laughs> okay, and then only surrender God. I am really stupid. Um, okay, not that stupid, right? But foolish. <laughs> I've made foolish decisions in my life. I have personally, you know, and I don't want to make some more. <laughs> okay. So, Lord, you are my wisdom. And how? Get into his word. Okay? His word, his revelations. And acknowledge him. You are the existing one. Help me not to be so foolish. Okay? And I embrace your wisdom. Holy Spirit will be ever ready to reveal to you when you humble yourself and say, Lord, teach me, guide me, help me. Okay? I have nothing to boast except in him. Okay, going to uh, wrap up now. The Hebrew letter uh, cat, a uh, head, head, right? So you have a wall or a fence, so that makes you like a doorway go into another realm. Okay, now and also in that place, you are protected. Head, a fence, speak of protection. So the, you, the the enemy or whatever from this fat, this outside cannot come inside. That's why we put your, we grill our houses, our gates, and all that got fence, right, to stop all the monkeys from coming inside <laughs> all right so protection so when you get into true jesus into the new life and you follow god's manual and instructions you are protected from the enemy he cannot touch you anymore but if you don't follow the instructions you one day go in next day go out <laughs> of the fence one day okay you already put inside the new realm and the next day you crawl outside <laughs> Then, of course, the enemy come and eat you up, okay? But you stay there. Stay in that spiritual realm. How you stay there? Jesus says, abide in me, right? John, uh, which one? John 15. If you abide in me and what? My words abide in you. Ah, okay? Then you stay there. Abide means stay there. Stay in that place, in that new life that you have been given, Follow those instructions and directions for your new life. The devil cannot get to you. Okay, don't crawl out. One day go in. I say, okay, today I want to learn your word. Next day, go back into the world wisdom. You're coming out yourself. And then you open yourself to be shocked. <laughs> okay, so one day you stop worrying, trusting God. Next day you worry again. <laughs> then the devil comes again. Ha, ha, ha. You know, I got you. You are no more resting in me. No more trusting in me. You are starting to worry again. <laughs> See? Stay there. So that how to stay there? Meditate, confess, do your devotion, walk with God. Right? Let his word be in your heart every day. Meditate day and night. It's still the same instruction of God. Both in Joshua 1, eight and Philippians 4.8. It's the same thing. Whatever is true, meditate. God's word is true. So that's how you stay inside the realm of your new life. By meditating day and night in the word of God until your mind is renewed. Until you really rule and reign in life. Rule and reign over your five senses. There's no shortcut, okay? No shortcut. The singing song of the... Uh, so head is another gateway. So it's also life to unite, to be joined. And number eight, then uh, it's also like a wedding canopy. Yeah, you go through a wedding in the Jew, Jewish culture wedding, they always, the bride and the groom have to walk through this canopy. All right, it's Jesus, our banner. Okay, we walk through, he protects us. He's always over us. He's always watching over us. All right, we are under his banner. Like a canopy like that. Uh, what else? Okay, and we can feast and rejoice in this new life. In this new, new life, it's all full of rejoicing. But sometimes rejoicing is also a choice that you make. Because the Bible, Paul says, rejoice. In all things, rejoice. All things means in times when there are challenges, sometimes you think it's bad news, I still rejoice. Not rejoice in the bad news. Rejoice in the good news. Rejoice that you are born from above, that your Heavenly Father is watching over you, and He will let no harm come to you. But this is still very general. If you got a specific word, Ah, it's more powerful. So you, you realize if you are always speaking general words, that means you don't have God's specific word inside you. 
you have maybe 10% power. <laughs> but if you begin to put God's specific words in your heart, and then it come up from your heart, your, your power increase. Because specific is more powerful than general, right? Hmm? Okay, number seven. Okay, now, catch this, okay? Because in the beginning when I hear a little bit of it, I also don't understand. But after I got it, wow, super exciting. The singing song of the head is the transcendent grace and life. Numerical value is eight. Number seven stands, number seven, we know, stands for completeness and perfection. Then the number must, then the next number must stand for more than perfection. I missed out on word. Okay, the next number, which is number eight, okay, will stand for more. It's always more than perfection and the fullness that overflows. So Jewish thought described the letter as the one beyond. So our number eight, the, the head, is the one beyond. So after completion, perfection, Number eight is the, the one beyond. Just like seven days, the next day is the one beyond. It's, it's beginning, okay? And then seven notes, those of you who, who music, in the music, the eighth letter is the next scale, all right? After the seven notes. So it's the, it's the one beyond, which is infinity is within this letter. Number eight, right? The mathematical symbol for infinity is an eight turn on its side. Can you see now the picture, right? Our, the symbol for infinity is actually the eight, number eight, lying down. As a gateway seen as a, so our head, number eight, is seen as a gateway into another realm. What realm? The realm of infinity. The infinite realm. Remember the two kingdom? Our kingdom is limited, right? By what we can see and not see. Kingdom of God is unlimited. What does it mean? Ephesians 3.20. Some of you have quoted this verse or meditate a bit. Do you know what, what it means? Anyone can still quote it. <laughs> God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Exceedingly, abundantly, above is infinity. But what limit God who is infinite and has the power to do things that are beyond the limit? What limits it from happening in our lives? Anyone can answer? We acknowledge that God is infinite. This verse means that he is able to do above and beyond, right? But what makes this thing not happen? The above and beyond. Yes, the thinking above and beyond what you think or ask. The thinking inside here. Cannot. Uh. You can quote that. That's why if you meditate more, confess and speak 1,000 times until this word become, hey, you know what I'm saying every day? That means God is infinity. All right? Then you begin to understand it. And why do we limit him? We limit him here. Right? God can heal. We say, cannot. Uh. Without even saying out. Oh, it's already inside our, this one. God can bless, you say cannot. Lah. <laughs> Indirectly from our actions, we are saying cannot. <laughs> you know, when, when we dare not give or dare not tie, we are saying cannot. Lah. Isn't it? We cannot lah, because we are still seeing the natural. But God said, I can do above and beyond all that you can ask or think. According to what? The power that works inside you. What is that power? The Holy Spirit inside you. You're praying in tongues. Okay? And believing God's word, your meditation, confession, generate a supernatural power inside you that will now transcend the natural. This is the realm of God. The unlimited realm, okay, that we can enter into beyond and above. What is the meaning of transcendent? Okay, 
The new covenant, later we're going to transcend it. The new covenant rectified by Jesus on the cross with his blood is the eighth covenant. The new covenant is the fulfillment and transcending. Now this word transcendent, very big. Huh? Anybody knows the meaning? <laughs> because I also beginning not sure. That's why I didn't catch the revelation until later on. Then I check and begin to understand what is the meaning of transcendent. The new covenant, okay, let's continue. Transcending of all creates fulfillment and transcending of all the covenants that preceded it. And it's our opportunity to enter into a totally new world. Remember the head is new, new, new beginning, new life, new world, new, everything new, new directions. To enter into a totally new world, life in another dimension. Oh, huh. if we are still physical, we will say, where got such thing? La? <laughs> Only Jesus can live in that dimension. Overcoming all the problems, laughing when others are, you know, when it is so difficult, having extra power, having, you know, this is like not human being already. <laughs> Isn't it how we think? We are, not, we are human being. Where can, you know, uh, be, be still smile and still laugh in the midst of problems only human ma. but this is where the new life is no longer only human it's just that we are living in a human body but the if you say what jesus jesus was living in the human body contracted in finite god right that's where he humbled himself but he was doing things that are supernatural transcends his human so-called human body abilities okay beyond so the new covenant now that we enter in fulfillment and transcending it means surpassing all right all the covenants that preceded and we enter into a new dimension of life you no more fear of death no more fear of sickness and disease huh no more fear of the virus even it come okay never mind come first i will build you and then i'll get well fast and then i'll begin to feed myself with the word of god so you're not going to enter me a second time <laughs> okay first time okay la, never mind la. people you come first time la. don't let it come all the time because you have access and entered into the new life the new realm of no more fear no more timidity all this that rule and reign over your former life all right but it doesn't happen like magic we need to meditate we need to build this new spirit man this new life that we have entered in through a new covenant we are made perfect before God through the new covenant. You are the righteousness of God. Okay, Hebrews 7, 19. For the law was, has never made anyone perfect, but in its place, a better hope, better covenant, hope through Jesus Christ, which gives us confidence to experience intimacy with God. So it's a better covenant. This new life is a definitely better than the old one. 1,000 million times better because it's a different dimension all together it's not about your own self-effort your own ability your own righteousness anymore it is tapping into his righteousness believing by faith and embracing what god said in his word therefore if you have no word you have nothing to embrace understand and we continue to live back in our old life everything that comes from this new life the power the uh, the the infinity all right the limitless power supernatural comes from the word understanding the word the revelations of the word of god okay it's a better covenant that draws us closer intimacy with god head is life and grace our new life in christ begins on a totally new level so exciting right this letter together with others, being not being based not on a thou shalt not, but firmly on a God has done. How do you know what God has done if you don't know the word of God? He is the one who tells us what God has done, right? In the Bible, God has removed your sin as far as the east is from the West, he became the sacrificial lamb. He became your righteousness. He died and we died with him. He was crucified with Christ. How do you know all this? Where am I quoting from? 
It's from His Word. And if you don't know this word personally in your life, you won't know what God has done. And why I tell Elisha, God has already healed you. It's because of Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 and 1 Peter 3, 4. Oh, what? That he says that you were healed. You were healed is past tense. I didn't cook it up. Neither did any pastor or believer cook this verse up. It is from the Bible. It, it is written in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. That by his stripes, you were healed. He was a man of sorrows, took our pain, took our sicknesses. So past tense. So how can I tell Elisha 100% and anchored on his promise that he was already healed? Where did that knowledge come from? Where did that revelation come from? Where? From his word. Understand? If you don't have his word, you cannot have that thing happen to you or you won't understand. You won't know this new realm is everything is God has done. God has already taken you away the fear of lack, the fear of poverty. Jesus died on the Cross. He took away your sins, the guilt, the condemnation. Where did we get all this knowledge from? From science, from a mathematics subject? No, from the Bible, from God's word. So if you don't spend time and put God's word inside, you won't know what God has done. You will still be thinking, uh, God not yet do. Okay? If no more, thou shalt not. Right? So it's no more. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. You cannot do this. It's God has done. Now, God said it is finished. We now serve him not out of fear of what might be. If I don't do this, wow, I'm so scared. If I don't do this, then something will happen to me. No. But out of love of what it is. Because it's already done. That's why number seven is perfectly finished by Jesus on the cross. The number of perfection and completion. And number eight is now what God has done and finished in number seven in the letter Zion. Now in the letter head is a new beginning. We do following God's commandments or God's word out of love for what it is. He tell you today you are a new creation. Today you are my child. That is who you are. Where do we, we get all this knowledge from? From the Bible. <laughs> Not, uh, no other uh, philosophy or will tell you that you have been born again from above. You are a new creation. You can overcome. Go ahead. Only from the Bible that tells you, reveals to you the truth. That all the past is, you don't have to be a good follower of, you know, by law. That means, if I don't do this, I will be cursed, right? But God has already done. Jesus has already finished the work of redeeming us so that you can access his blessings. And if there are some instructions into this new life, all you need to do is just follow it. There must be a purpose, even if you don't understand it. The one who wrote it, the Bible, okay, is for our good. We are literally a new race of people where the fear of death and of judgment has been removed because Christ has suffered on our behalf. Yeah? That's why it means that you are a new creation. We are literally today, because of the new spirit man, the new life, right? all revealed in this letter, head, is a new race of people. Ha, you're not from this earth, you know. Jesus said you're in this world, but you're not of this world. Temporary residence here. Don't go and make your permanent residence here. <laughs> okay, temporary residence, we are passing by. And when we are passing by, realize where you come from. Jesus didn't build his mansion on this earth. <laughs> his mansion is up there. He said, in my father's house, you know, who, where is your father's house? Down here or up there? Here, temporary residence, okay. You know, whatever you like, you like, uh, he will give it to you. All right? Following his instructions, okay? But there is one permanent there, beautiful mansion that is waiting for his children. That is eternal. Okay? And the Bible teaches how to, how to uh, have this. 
go into this one day. All right. Okay. So new race of people, very different one. That's why the world will see the lights, you shining, prospering, and they will say you are. Are you from this earth one? <laughs> Anyone ask you why you can laugh when everyone is uh, scared of the pandemic or losing job? Why are you so confident? Why are you still there to tithe and offer? Why you believe in a God? Hmm. Because this world, the people without Jesus don't know about this new realm. And you become that new people. The Jews were a different people. God's people. Their purpose on this earth when God chose them to be his nation is to display his glory that is from above. They were the brightest people, the smartest, the most richest. God's people. How do we know from the word and already happened? So all these things from his word. The eighth covenant where we are included transcends time and space and where the foundation stone for is, is where the foundation for the age to come. Transcends time. That means surpasses time. It's not, oh God, I need 10 years to be prosperous in the natural. But God said I can do it faster. Transcends time because God created time. The, shed, the head re rejoices in transcendence. Definition of transcendence is lying beyond the ordinary range of perception, supreme. Jesus is transcendent. Transcend means surpasses time and space. You say, oh, I can only see this space. You know, God can only do in physical meeting. God can also do in Zoom. <laughs> okay, transcend space. Where you are in Singapore, where we are here, where we hear God's word together, God does something powerful. Holy Spirit is there with you wherever you are, changing your life giving you revelation, giving you the fire, fire falling down on you. Transcendent. So what do you mean? Supreme. Surpasses the ordinary. Beyond and above, the even in the English dictionary, transcendent means beyond or above the range of normal or physical human experience. That's why the doctor said miracle. Okay, I never experienced this before. How can, that's what we call miracle. Beyond human experience that's transcendence that's the new life a new level of knowledge surpassing the ordinary is exceptional you want to be ordinary we are not ordinary that's why god said we are peculiar people on this earth it's different already the day you got born again all right superior god existing apart from and not subject to the limitations of the material universe this is just in the Dictionary, I didn't put it there, right? But I'm reading out to you. God is about God. Transcendent speaks of the supernatural realm, speaks of something supernatural, supreme, extraordinary, not ordinary. Basically, of God existing apart from and not subject to the limitations of the material uni universe. This material world is very limited, right? limited space, limited time, you only got 24 hours. But when you transcend and you enter into the new life following God's instructions, receiving his power, you are able to do things more than the 24 hours that you have. This is calling transcending time and space in so many other areas. All right? You say, oh, no, no way can, can be healed one. This one is uh, what, uh, it's a, it's a terminal disease. That is limited by earth knowledge, limitations of the material universe. And God's universe in heaven, there's no sickness. Huh? <laughs> so can you see the difference? <laughs> right? But now you can have this new life, new dimension life on this earth in your life. It's supernatural. So you cannot limit God. <laughs> it's, just to let you know, when I was typing out in my phone about this word, thinking, right, where we limit God, suddenly, you know, I missed a few letters and then the word came out, T-H-I-N, T-H-I-N, then separate K-I-N-G. <laughs> Says, hey, the word thinking comes from thin and king. 
So if we stop thinking all the nonsense and from the, the world, then Jesus become king and we become king and we begin to rule and reign in this life. Yeah, and that's my fun with the Lord, Holy Spirit. Okay, so Jesus, the form of this letter, the bridge of this letter points upwards, reminds us that what he has opened, no man can close. Again, where is the specific verse? <laughs> Revelation 3, right? Where God opens doors that no one can close. Also, you know, also knowing that this spiritual realm, once you enter in, you cannot, you know, the, you cannot lose your salvation. All right. Although we walk in and out. But that is permanent. You have entered into a new life, you won't lose this salvation. Okay, it's, it's just whether how you live this life. If you live this new life, understanding from God's word that it is such a beautiful, different dimension that I have access to, I can live in it if I choose to, by following the Bible, by sticking for the treasure, le learning from his word, if receiving revelation and understanding from his word, then I can live in this realm. Because what he has opened, no one can close. Jesus invites us to enter and live transcendent lives, lives beyond the range of perception, beyond the range of the five senses. That's it. That's, how, that's, the, that's all I can, you know. If my body tells me I'm sick, that's it. I'm sick. You conclude already. But the transcendent life, the new life is, no, I'm healed. I have divine life. I can command this fever to go, this virus to die. Yeah? This is the new life, the one that is beyond, the one beyond the completed work of the finished work of Christ, the one beyond the seven, the one after the seven, the one after it is finished. It is finished and then we also finish. <laughs> no, it doesn't stop. It is finished. Jesus finished. Jesus said it is finished. For us, we go forward after he said it is finished. The one after, the number eight, the beginning of the new life. But how are we going to live this new life? We have absolutely no idea until we go into the word of God for his instructions, for his revelation and to live this new life. Or we just want to finish at number seven. It is finished. Also can. <laughs> All right. But then we are... Uh, Missing out on what is beyond that it is finished. The resurrection life is beyond. The eighth day Jesus rose from the dead. Have you want to last live in the life? Okay, my sins are forgiven and every day fighting against, all right, the devil, you know, with the devil playing havoc in your life. Or you want to live the resurrection life beyond the cross. That is what is available to us. That is in the letter head. The new life. But you, this is a verse about Jesus, all right? Uh, in Micah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from, it's a prophecy about Jesus, coming from that realm before existence, before this universe came into existence. He came from, from the old, from everlasting infinity. See, that's why Melchizedek has no beginning and no ending in the Bible. The new priesthood, which is Jesus Christ, right? So Jesus appearing on earth, lead town to rule over earthly nation. He, he transcends time and space from the infinite realm, dimension of God's realm, where there is no beginning and no ending. He is the beginning and the end. He comes into this earthly realm that we are now living in. And he rules over the natural realm, the physical realm. Okay, so over Israel, he chose, he humbled himself. And he, in dying for us, in ruling here, he tells us that we can now transcend time and space too and access this new realm of the new beginning, new life. He literally, since time before creation existed, that's why he said, I am. And the Pharisees, accuse him of blasphemy, that he is God, because only God used the name I am. And Jesus is the I am. That means he is the beginning. He, was, he existed before this universe existed. 
He is literally from another dimension outside of time. So wonderful to know your Savior, your Lord, your Master, your Creator, your God whom you believe in is not a religion. He is one who created time and He transcends time and space He from another dimension. See, the Hollywood tried to create all this, right? Because they want Superman and all that come from another dimension. Jesus Christ is the real one that came from this dimension and He is your personal Lord and Savior, don't you want to know him more? He is the I am. His activities predate all of creation and will continue after this present world has disappeared. This world can only last for the number of thousands of years. Human, uh, whatever you built on this earth, the most is 100 years, 200 years, uh, all these uh, ancient sites still will be destroyed one day, still will decay. What is eternal? God. The realm of God, what God created heaven, he says, will continue forever and ever. My words will never pass away. Everything else will pass away. So sorry if you put your whole heart and mind onto your, <laughs> your bank account, your money, your house. It will pass away. But if you put your whole heart and mind meditating, confessing God's words, speaking, those are eternal. They are life. They give you life. They will never pass away, Jesus said. My words are eternal. He transcends time. He's coming soon. He is God's gift for us. So when you look at this letter, head, think of a life beyond the ordinary. Okay? New life. So don't look at 1 Corinthians 5, 17 and say, oh, yeah, so boring. I really put uh, this one. I know already lah. It's actually very exciting. Until today, I'm still very excited about 1 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. <gasps> you all like new things, right? <laughs> it's a new life. How can you not be excited about a new life that is in a different dimension, that is from heaven, that surpasses, that's infinity, infinite, surpasses ordinary, it's supernatural. But how do you access it? First, you already have the key to Jesus Christ. You already got the door. You went through Jesus Christ. Now it's just to get into the instructions for this new life and follow those instructions of God's word. So think of a life beyond the ordinary. Have you ever wondered? I want to be extraordinary. Yeah, now you can be extraordinary. Jesus made us, every one of us, extraordinary. Think of transcendence. All right, the supernatural, moving into beyond time and space, transcending. Okay. Wow. Can you imagine people, you know, the Hollywood create back to the future. All right. Korean drama, so got, you know, everywhere trying to, to go into time and space and all that time travel. And we have the God who actually can travel into time and out of time and all that and be able to declare, change your future. People say how in the world. Yeah, by our speaking, you were formerly in this world heading towards hell. Now, Jesus saved her by his grace. Now speak God's word. Life into your everyday life. Joy into everyday life. Laughter, health, healing, prosperity. According to God's word. If you don't have God's word, you don't have anything to speak. There is nothing to create. You understand? It's inside your mouth. The power to create your life. The world said, design your own life. Today, we design our life, but not our own life. The life that God has designed for us. We just speak it out. Speak out from where? From his word. Whatever his word say. His word said, your new life is good. Then we follow. He said, your new life is a new creation. All things have passed away. Then we don't look backwards for direction anymore. The past is gone. Follow those instructions. The manual. Transcend time and space, your ability, you become a genius. <laughs> My God. Think of Jesus' invite to enter the gate that he has eternally opened. He asks us, come, come in and start with me, revelations. I am, you know, he knocked on the door and said, come in. And that's where Eli, uh, Xiao Ling came in and others at the invitation. What invitation? It's an invitation to a new dimension of life. It's not just an invitation to attend church. <laughs> so boring. You know? It's an invitation. Jesus said, come to me. It's an invitation to a new life. 
a new dimension that he has eternally opened. Think of the pre-existence of Jesus. That's when you think of the letter. Hey, he existed before you were born. He existed before this world. What a mighty God he is. And he is. You, will you choose him as your personal God and follow him? Matthew, so here, the yoke, all right? Jesus is the yoke, the youth, supernatural, joining us together. Again, look at the letter, man, the valve, and the zayin, which is the crown man with the sword of the spirit. Again, it is the word of God. The crown man has a scepter, ruled by righteousness, and his word. The sword is able to cut between spirit, soul, and body. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. Learn from who? Jesus very clearly, clearly state, he, he, learn from Jesus, learn from the word. Don't go search everywhere in this world, wasting time. Learn from the word of God. Don't waste time. All right? He is the all wisdom. In him, he transcends time, the new beginning, the new life, the new dimension life. He said, I'm gentle and lowly in heart. I will teach you. Patiently, he loves us. Patiently, he teaches us. And you will find what? Rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek. See, humble. That's where we've been learning all the letters about humility. To enter into the dimension of revelation and the spiritual realm is to learn of him. Humble ourselves, Lord, I don't know anything. I come to learn from you. And then he will give us rest. You will find rest for your souls. How beautiful. Jesus. And the last verse, it's the same verse in the TPT version. Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. He didn't say, come to so-and-so. Come to me, to Jesus, to his word. <laughs> a tissue is for you to bring you to his word, bring you to Jesus himself, to have this hunger that say, Lord, I want to come to you. I will refresh your life. Who? Pastor Stephanie or Deborah has no power to refresh your life. I only have the power. I only give you the word which has the power to refresh your life. If you will believe in the word that I preached, the revelation is in him. You, your life will reach this new dimension, will have this power that goes beyond and above. For I am your oasis. Who? Jesus. It's the word. Yes, first the person of Jesus and then continue. Is his word the new direction into this new life? His manual. I point you to him. I don't point you to myself because in me, I have absolutely zero power to change your life. But his word has Jesus in his word has every power. The supernatural transcending power. He is your oasis. He is that life, the water. Simply join your life with mine. With whose life? Jesus. With whose word? Jesus' word. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, and easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me for all that I require of you. Ah, don't listen to the devil say, oh, very hard to follow Jesus. Like a lot of commandments, like a lot of laws. I like, have to do this. I like, have to give life to tithe. So stop listening to all that. Go into God's word. Listen to this word. We all know this word properly. Uh, Matthew 11. If not, go back. Meditate on this word. Jesus, personalize it. Yes, Lord, I come to you. You refresh my life. You means you and your word your wisdom, open the Bible, start meditating, start speaking, start disciplining your mouth, your life, don't be lazy and say, I don't want to open my mouth, I'm very tired. You're coming to him, do the, subdue this body. Paul says, discipline this body and start speaking life into your life, your children's life, your family life, your working life. Speak his word. Only his word is life. No point saying, okay, God, God, uh, just, just bless, bless everything. <laughs> what? God say, what? You want me to do, hey? <laughs> no, just bless. Huh? 
what? <laughs> I, he only do according to his word. Bless in what area, what you want. Okay, that's the word of God. Say, Lord, I want this to look, live in divine health. Okay, then go to the word of divine health. Meditate, 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 meditate. Speak, speak, speak. It manifests because God said what? Hey, you have the power to do. Lah. Don't ask me to do what I already give you the power to do. <laughs> That's what we are always telling God to do, right? Lord bless me. Lah. Because it, you, what, what you want? Bless me in my finances. Because say, okay, you can do it. Because X, uh, Joshua 1, 8, say what? Observe. You know, meditate on my word day and night that you may observe to do according to what is what is written in it that you may make your way prosperous and you will have good success. God give us the power. Ephesians three ten also says the same thing, right? God is able to do according to the power that work in us. So you release that power out. It's already inside you. You speak. Every single word of God is saying this. God who create. How he creates things is from speaking his word. So we speak his word by having his word inside us. And how do we get it? Because 40 years of our life, we don't have his word. If you have just been born, you know, or been a Christian, but never meditate God's word. You don't have his word. Sorry, but it's not too late. Now start to put his word inside, not general, okay? Specific in different areas of your life and act upon it and follow this new life. You will find refreshment and rest. That's when we become, his will become, you know, joining with your life, with mine, that's what Jesus is made. Lord, your will becomes my will. How does it will become your will? First, you, you want to, and then next, you're going to find out what his will are. <laughs> Okay. Right. He said, okay, your will become my will, but then you don't know, know what's his will. Oh, yeah. God said, this child is uh, opening, <laughs> although God never opening. Right? But go find out in the word of God. When you listen to preaching, teaching, I teach you, it's full of God's word. Don't waste all those words that I give you from God's word. Okay, Listen again and jot down those very important scriptures that change your life that can change your life, that can help you to live this transcendent life, this new dimension life, this new life. Hey, but what I require of you is pleasant and easy. You see, then we have mixture in us, okay? Pastor, you say, Jesus said, you know, my ways are easy, but I, I feel it very difficult. You are speaking two things, okay? Because one thing is, God's word say it's easy. Why you say difficult? Because you're still filled with the ah the thinking of the before, the past one. You're still looking back, side, left. You haven't got the understanding of God fully yet. So when you go back into God's word, actually what Jesus said is correct. Because when you understand more of what is grace, his righteousness, his power, then I like the word that Evelyn God said, the daughter said, easy peasy, mommy. <laughs> easy peasy, exam is easy peasy, which is uh, Esther, Esther Ng, right? The young uh, little Esther, sit for the exam and I told her to uh, pray in tongues. And then I don't, you know, uh, the mom said that she come back and said, exam is easy peasy because Holy Spirit gave me all the answers, right? See, Holy Spirit gave, so, if you have God's word, God's direction, God's word, everything is easy peasy exactly according to what Jesus said. Because it all our part is just to rule and reign over the lazy body. <laughs> and then feed ourselves with the spirit, with words and act of follow. The rest, the things that, the difficult one is to turn the, you know, the thing. And that is the part that God does to supply the power he is the one who has the power. Our part, he just tells us to believe and speak it out. Believe in him, speak it out, follow his way. First, we cannot believe what we don't even know what to believe. <laughs> okay, that part is not easy peasy. Okay, that part you have to do. <laughs> Whereby, you, know, you make a choice and you set your time all right, to uh, come in and learn and also uh, on your own time. 
to meditate and confess God. So I don't know why it's so hard all the years of my life in teaching. The hardest thing, so-called hard, is when people find it like, they, you know, they don't want, they resist doing this meditation and confession of God. And that is the key to their victorious life in Christ. And yet it is where most Christians resist. They rather say, uh, okay, okay, amen. And then go back and never do it. It's just like really see the food and not eat. <laughs> okay, so do it. All right. When you have God's word inside, you really is instructions into this new life. You will enter this new life and transcend time and space as your creator who lives in you. God is able to do all things above and beyond what we can ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. This is the head. This is the new life, the new beginning of grace and favor upon your life. You become the favorite child where God works for you. You get into your destination. Focus, focus your eyes one direction from his word, right? His word tells us a lot of things. The wisdom comes from his word. But right now, it's like you don't have God's word, you are blur, blur. You may not get what I'm saying totally, fully, because you don't have God's word. When I say, okay, focus, I have, I have a lot of words in mind, a lot of God's word. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you don't have that, you may not fully understand what I'm saying. But if I were to give you every single word, then you have to take the whole day, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I can't, right? So that's why in each session, I can only give you a bit, a bit. But when I make a statement, it is based on many, many specific words of God. All right, and you can have that too. As you begin to store what is really worth storing, which is the word of God in your life, the revelations. And as we learn the Hebrew letters, more and more God is revealing to us how wonderful he is, how real he is. The, the, the worst thing that, uh, that stops a believer from entering this new life or rather living in this new life is this thought that God not very real. Unconsciously, we feel that he's not real because we are still used to the physical world. And that stops us from entering this new life, this new dimension. So in order to know he is real, Right, is to find out from his word. The more we have the word of God the, and revelations, the more we realize God is real. And God is real, then what is not real is what is the physical world that's happening. That is will pass. Right? Everything will decay. That is the thing that is not real. That's why fact is just what this world presents to you based on five senses. Truth is the eternal realm based on God's word, the eternal God. That's where we need to get to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Okay, amen, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is head. Okay, go and listen again, meditate. Wonderful alphabet declaring the new dimension after number seven, the new life that Jesus invites us to enter in. But we cannot fully taste this new life if we don't follow his word. We cannot follow his word if we don't know his word. <laughs> Correct? Pathetic, right? Yeah. So that's where we put this time and put time. And we know there's treasure. This treasure is to know the new life and live in this new life while we are still on this earth and not miss it. Amen? Okay, praise the Lord. It is finished <laughs> for now. Okay, enter number eight, okay? The new life, the new dimension. So remember what you think of, right? When you roughly beyond the ordinary, when you think of this letter, okay? That's your song. Song of letter eight, H, H, H. Is the letter of transcending. I don't want to live ordinary life anymore. You all are here because you are sick of this ordinary life. If you are not sick, I'll make you sick 
of this life. <laughs> if you still think this life can give you everything, I will sit here and tell you this life can offer you nothing. <laughs> because everything can offer you will decay. I tell you the new life that Jesus gives us is the abundant life. It's the eternal life that you become overcomer. Amen? Okay.